Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakhah Kodash. Yahweh in the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world ignorantly calls God, and the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and mercy to the house of David, those men that are doing His work in sincerity and in truth across the four corners of the earth. Present their bodies as a living sacrifice and much love to the 130 of believers, you men, women, and children that are listening, learning, and helping in all sincerity and humility. To you all, I say shalom and greetings. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the Spirit. All right. Um, Lord willing, I can get through this. Um, just some, I actually I had this lesson on my mind since last night, but I just couldn't put it together appropriately how I, how I imagined it through the Spirit. So the Lord had me gather some more information and more data. Uh, actually, I yeah, just thought about something else, too. Um, just so I can be able to put this together uh, with the, the the spirit that Yahweh Shemuel Shai has ordained it. And Lord willing, I can bring out some good points here. <laughs> I finally found his ass. I just had a there's one more picture. So what you're going to be seeing is uh, I guess I don't know the proper word, a montage or a slew, right, of different photos here, okay? Um, because this breakdown, and I'm I'm just going to go ahead and go to it. This breakdown, you know, sometimes is uh, brought out incorrectly. You know, and I, I, I even used to break it down incorrectly, but the reason we're here is is all for edification's sake, so we can learn through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem El Shah, so we can be better and and do the gospel of the Lord, right? Um, but this is uh the book here, and I got a I got I probably got about four verses that I want to bring out through the spirit. But um this is uh second Ezra uh chapter five and verse eight. It says there shall be a confusion also in many places. And the fire shall be oft sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Okay, so we know that in the last days, these coming days, there's going to be mass confusion in the state of America. We we in the know know that through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shah. We know and we understand that all too well. All right, and the Lord is going to be sending different judgments throughout the four corners of the earth. Wild beasts are going to change their place. So we already see uh, different animals belonging in different ha in different hab habitats that they don't belong in in the first place. Right. We're seeing that, you know, I was telling the brothers down here, you know, we live in West Palm Beach. But on Palm Beach, I, I, a few months ago, two on two different occasions, I saw coyotes and we're like, what the hell are they doing over there? You know, but a lot of animals are going to be changing their place. We got lion country safari down here, different environments where. Animals are going to dwell and go to other places, all right? But also, Esau has put them in other places where they don't belong. So you're going to see animals in different places. But the key point I want to get here is menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. That's the point of this lesson, okay? So menstruous women, you know, that goes into women that's on their period, right? So, you know, uh, it has, uh, you know, you got, when it comes to a woman, period, you know, she has a, a woman's period is a signifier that she's able to have children. All right. That's the uh, one great, great understanding about the woman who having a period. She's able to bring forth children. So now it's talking about these last days. The children that they're going to bring forth are going to bring forth monsters. OK. And so with the correct understanding of this, you know, and I remember Apostle Ramlov going into this. You know, uh, those monsters are these different photos that you're seeing here go across the screen. OK. And these are examples of monsters. And, I, you know, I can't remember all which ones I bring out, man. I'm going to it was some really good ones that I'm not going to be able to bring uh, because. A lot of these have have youths, young ones on on here that I might not be able to use. So I'm going to have to reorganize this, but. The young ones are some of the worst ones, if y'all want me to be completely honest. Some of the worst photos are the young ones, and I couldn't even get all of those. You know, so I don't know which order I'm going to bring these out in. 
but you're going to see men with complete strange deformities. All right, let me go ahead and get that word deformity, actually. It's going to have some strange deformities. And these are all judgments of Yahweh Bashim HaShah. But women, we already see women do this now, but we're going to see in these times to come, it's going to be on a much higher level. Okay, the definition for deformity it says a deformed part, especially of the body, a malformation. And it says under the children born with deformities. The next one says the state of being deformed or misshapen. Okay. And I wish I could put the scene in here. But there's a scene where in uh, the movie Spartan, uh, Spart uh, 300, I always bring it out. In that movie, he said anybody that was born with uh, that was born misshapen or with problems, they weren't fit to be a Spartan, so he would cast them out. Okay, so that's what was happening to uh, uh, those children. All right, so uh, and so these same things, these children, you're going to start seeing them on a much higher level. All right, but I, I want to see that this, I, I clicked under here, what are the types of birth defects? And it's many more than they have on this list, but just to have the, the four that are listed here, it says cleft lip or cleft palate. That's when you see somebody with their lip like look like it's kind of cut and sunk in. It says heart defects such as missing or misshaped valves. Abnormal limbs such as club foot. Neural tube defects such as spina bifida. And problems relating to the growth and development of the brain and spinal cord. Okay. So these are, uh, I have here, it says, uh, this is uh, tabers.com. It says, what does deformity mean in medical terms? It says alteration in or distortion of the natural form of a part, organ, or the entire body. It may be acquired or congenital. If present after injury, deformity usually implies the presence of bone fracture, bone dislocation, or both. You know, so we're, we're seeing uh, a lot of the uh, deformities that, that come from judgment, ultimately. Right. These these things come from judgment, regardless of people want to believe it. So these are the monsters that people are going to be seeing. All right. This is not talking about uh, specifically two thirds being wicked or nothing like that. These are monsters. Man. You know, honestly, you know, this on this part, I will say I speak as a man. Uh, you know, I believe a lot of these monstrosities are going to be born through what? Uh, the, 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 the birth after that yob, the birth after that jump shot, you know, these, these they had a, a brother sent a video actually earlier that, well, a, a photo, it says, oh my God, his mom, uh, his mom and dad didn't take the, uh, the J-A-B, you know? So now he looks normal. And so they, they then the, the girls that were doing it were like joined at the face, you know, and they look bugged out. You know, they're going to bring forth these, these, they're going to start bringing forth monsters, you know, because of all of the things they've injected into their bodies, you know? And like I say, I speak as a man on that, uh, just a, just an assumption, but it make, it makes a lot of sense because people are putting things in their bodies that they are not. Okay. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and get this next, uh, precept that came to mind. This is uh, the book of uh, Psalms 66. I'm going to start at verse uh, three. It says, uh, actually, let me start at two just for the sake of it. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. See that you got to call in the name of Yahweh Bashim Al-Shai to be saved. But see, a lot of them monstrous women, a lot of them going to be two thirds, uh, uh, two. A lot of them going to be uh, women that are part of our nation. But, you know, a lot of them predominantly per pertain to uh, heathen. But a lot of them going to be Israelite women, too, going to be bringing forth monsters. It says, uh, say unto Yahweh, how terrible art thou in thy works? The Lord is terrible in his works. He's mighty in his works, but he's terrible, too. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. Right? The greatness of the Lord's power, that's where they're going to submit themselves. It says, all the earth shall worship thee. And shall sing unto thee, they shall sing unto thy name. And with that name again, Salah. Come and see the works of the Most High, Yahweh. He is terrible 
and is doing toward the children of men. See, a lot of these people that you're seeing on the screen are heathen. So the Lord said he terrible in his doing toward them. You know, the Lord lets you know that the Israelites are above these other nations, even something like a physical appearance, even though we judge not by appearance. Right. But look at these people, man. These are you could, these are abominations. You don't want to be born like this. You know, this is sad. This is terrible. This is miserable. This is depressing. You know. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shah, we glad we're in a position where we not jacked up like these people. Okay? And a lot of these people are Levitically unclean. Okay? And so a lot of man, the Lord is bad with how he set things up. Let me uh go ahead and read this. This is uh Leviticus 21 and 16. It says, And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed and the generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his power. So if you have a blemish, you already. So what the Spartans got, they really got that from the scriptures. If you got a blemish, then you're not supposed to approach the altar to offer uh, to Yahweh Shai. It says for whatsoever man uh, he be. Now, OK, I want to say this. We're working on our salvation with fear and trembling. All right. So I'm speaking as a, well, really this, uh, you know, when it comes to Jake, Jake is going to have things going on. But then the day of a brother got his mind and his spirit is in the right place, right? If the Lord, it just because you're Levitically unclean doesn't mean that you're, uh, uh, if you're, a, if you're an Israelite does not mean that you're not ordained to teach and to prophesy. You see that that's what, that's the difference. Because at the end of the day, say, for instance, you go to camp and you got some box the day before. By technicality, you're Levitically unclean, too. So I'm, I'm not saying it like, hey, if you if you find out that you have one of these uh, disformities, all right, deformities, you're not supposed to repent and get right and do the way you have. I'm not saying that. Right. I'm just giving some examples to know that me people have these major uh, malformations, these major problems. This is what that scripture bringing forth monsters is pertaining to. Okay, it says, uh, for whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose or anything superfluous. Okay, let me go ahead and get, let me see what superfluous, uh, Leviticus 21. Let me go to that, let me go to that real quick and see what it says for superfluous. You know, obviously through the spirit, you can, you can kind of guess what it means, but it says, oh, first let me read this. It says, uh, in the NLT, it says, no one who has a, who has a defect quality qualifies, excuse me, no one who has a defect qualifies whether he is blind, lame, disfigured, or deformed. Okay. These people were considered uh, Levitically unclean. Okay. Let me go to this word, superfluous. The word there is uh, Shirai. That's interesting. It says to extend, stretch out, to stretch oneself. Superfluous. So these people here that you're seeing, it says deformed by excess of members. So some of these people got extra toes, extra feet, extra limbs, you know, uh, um, but they look superfluous. Longer extremities. Okay. A flat nose. But it says, or a man that is broken footed or broken handed or crook back or a dwarf, or that hath the blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or hath his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord, Yahweh made by fire. He hath the blemish, he shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his power. He shall eat the bread of his power, both of the most holy and of the holy. Only shall not go into the veil, nor come nigh into the altar, because he hath a blemish that he profane not my sanctuaries, for I, the Lord, do sanctify them. And Moses told unto Aaron and, his, and to his sons and to all the children of Israel. So if you had these things, you weren't to go into the altar and to the Holy of Holies. But, you know, we pray the Lord have mercy on us. And a lot of men are imperfect in these times and they have blemishes. So if the Lord put it on your spirit to go out and do his will, then so be it. But a lot of these men are meant to be in helping positions more so than uh, uh, in positions of uh, teaching. 
you know, but the Lord put it on your spirit. Hey, you know, may the Lord bless you and continue. But as far as these heathen, they don't have a damn chance. They don't have a damn chance. And the Lord is going to utterly destroy them. And we, we, we constantly seeing that now through the spirit and power of your house by Shemel Shah, all of these people with these uh, malfunctions, you know, with these issues and with these problems, you know, bumps and uh, elephantitis, cleft hook, long nose, crook back, flat nose, you know, these are FELTs, his wicked ass, always bring him up all the time because, you know, he, he wasn't fit. He said he wanted a, a women, wealth and, uh, and a uniform. He wasn't fit. And see, this is why, because that physical deformity, it makes you weak in the mind. You know, we, you, you, you're you not set up for uh, rulership and to be a king when you have these deformities. It, it creates a insecurity in you, a weakness in you. If anybody's willing to see that movie 300, I always talk about it. You know, when you have those positions, all right, and you have deformities, you, you're weak in the flesh, you're weak in the mind, all right? So the Lord, he ain't playing that. He's coming back to build us up and to make us stronger. And just like FELTs, he couldn't lift their shield. So his ass got left behind. Even though the king told him he could still help by tossing away bodies. But he wasn't hearing that. All right? He wasn't hearing that. And these, a lot of these men don't hear that. They want their own will. And I've worked with adults with developmental disabilities. And some of them, you know, you see that even for something like that, they just don't have it through the spirit and power of by Shemar Shah. So I don't want to make this too long. Um, I pretty much hit the points that I want to hit. Let me just check my, uh, make sure it was, uh, make sure it's not one more verse that I wanted to get. I I will get this one, even though this is a uh, slightly different, uh, the book of wisdom of Solomon It's slightly different, but, uh, if you can receive it through the spirit. I'll kind of try to uh, word it around a little bit. Let me see. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17. Uh, and I'll start at 13. And the expectation from within being less, counted the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth forth the torment. But they sleeping the same sleep that night, which was indeed intolerable and which came upon them out of the bottoms of inevitable, inevitable hell were partly vexed with monstrous apparitions. So, you know, they, they're going to be vexed with all type of apparitions, seeing all type of things and shit. Even seeing one of these people in front of you, you be like, what the hell is that? That is freaky. Even though these apparitions probably look deadly, disastrous, monstrous. You know, but at the end of the day, hey, the Lord says monstrous apparition. It says, and partly fainted, their heart failing them for a sudden fear and not look for it came upon them. So you, you see one of these goddamn, I'm not saying that these were the things that were popping in front of them of old, but if one of these things pop in front of you with these damn deformities, like, what the fuck? You might freak the hell out. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to get that out through the spirit. Them, them deformities, women are going to be bringing them forth. And there's a lot going to do with these things. That we're already seeing people, the things people eat, people take. But men have uh, have taken that and lost their way through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Men are going to take the RFID, C-H-I-P, and lose their way, and the Lord is going to destroy them. So, hey, Lord willing, this was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhach Wadash, double honors to the apostles, and that was a great millstone. Who rule well, and peace and mercy to the house of David. Until next time, Shalom.